ALVR has come really far since I first used it at the end of 2020. It now supports Windows and Linux, it'll work with any CPU or GPU brand, it works on machines that don't even have video encoding, it'll work on uh, a Pico, a Quest, or a Vive, it's developer friendly, it supports iron face tracking, it's open source, it's amazing. And this video is about how to set it up on any OS and the specific configuration things you can do to make your VR experience even better. So if you already know exactly where you want to be, go to the chapters in the playback bar. But first, the Windows specific parts of the installation. Configuration comes after and, well, there's not much to really do in Windows, there's one way to do it. Go to the releases section in GitHub, assuming you've got Steam and SteamVR installed, download the LVR installer, just click through it and install it, and then also download and install VB Cable, which is what you'll need to use to make your microphone accessible to other devices that will come from your headset. That's literally it for what's special to Windows. So now, Linux. If I say anything Linuxy that isn't related to ALVR but you want to learn more or you don't quite know what I'm talking about, a very good resource for you to use is the Arch Wiki. It's not just for Arch Linux. Any Linux distro you use, there is a lot of useful information in there, so you should try searching things in there. First though, you should know that there are two different ways that you can install ALVR on Linux, because there are two different ways you could use Steam on Linux. The first is through a Flatpak package, which is the way that I would recommend, because the instructions are the same for every Linux distro, and the second is your native package, which is different per distro and there are different settings, things that you might need to do for each one. First we'll do the Flatpak install. So assuming you've got Flatpak Steam installed with SteamVR installed in it, you'll want to go to the ALVR releases section in GitHub. For now you have to do the nightly because this is a new edition, but when ALVR next has a stable release it will be added to that. Uh, you'll go to the releases section and download the Flatpak file. Then you'll do Flatpak dash dash user install dash dash bundle and then the file you just downloaded. Technically it should already work, but every time you launch SteamVR it'll ask you for super user permission. And then you can actually press yes and never get asked for it and SteamVR will work. The problem is it will ask you every single time and fail to give it permission every single time so the pop-up box never goes away because it's a flat pack. So you can run this command which will also be in the description and that will give SteamVR the permission it needs to never ask you again. And that's it for the Flatpak, other than if you have any issues with hardware encoding, you can look on the ALVR Flatpak wiki and install the dependencies, but you those should be installed automatically because you've got Steam. Though even if you're a Flatpak user who's done now installing it, you should still stay because there are more Linux specific quirks after I do the native installation tutorial. And to do that, it might be even simpler than the Flatpak, just go to the GitHub release, download the LVR app image and run it. Some people though, on certain distros like Fedora, and I think Manjaro did something similar but they might have backtracked, you won't be able to access hardware encoded video from your GPU by default. And to fix that you'll want to enable RPM Fusion and then you'll want to install the Mesa Freeworld package, which is what allows your GPU to use its own special encoding hardware to encode video faster and better rather than using your CPU. If you're on Arch, you don't need any special Freeworld version of the Mesa video encoding drivers, but you do still need to install them in the first place, and there's a chance you don't already have them, so you'll want to install libva Mesa driver from your package manager. NVIDIA users shouldn't have to worry about it because video encoding comes part of the drivers, it's all one thing. Next though, if you're on X you don't have to worry about this, but if you're using Wayland, you're gonna have to right click SteamVR, go to properties, and add this launch option. Otherwise, when you try to use ALVR with SteamVR, it will track fine and the controllers will all be fine, but you'll only only get output on your monitor and it won't be sent to the headset. At least that's how it is with the Flatpak version of Steam. I was told that that's meant to be fixed now without needing that launch option, but it's not for me. I still need it, so I thought I should tell you about it. In Windows, you're likely to have ALVR pick the correct device to stream audio from to your headset automatically. But if you're on Linux, at least for me, I was getting my desktop microphone streamed to the headset, so, so I, would I would say, say something, something and it would, would echo, echo into, into my ears from the headset. headset. And to fix that, you'll want to install uh, either as a flat pack or from your native repos, it doesn't matter which version of Steam you're using, either will work, Pavu Control. From there, you'll want to go to your recording devices and switch the ALVR device, the, the drop down, to monitor of your speakers. That should work. And it's worth adding that if you're generally having audio troubles, whether related to LVR or not, it's probably worth migrating to Pipewire for audio if you haven't already. It should work better for LVR too. There are also a few little extra things that you wouldn't know about unless you've tried using SteamVR and Linux for a while. I had to disable my desktop locking and 
automatically putting the display to sleep because that would also end VR and it wouldn't know that if you're in VR it shouldn't lock or turn off. And also, if you've got an AMD GPU, you might have terrible, terrible stuttering by default. And that's because the GPU isn't automatically going into a higher power profile. To fix that, you should download Core Control, and also go to the link in the description for the wiki for installing Core Control, where you'll also be shown how to give Core Control permission to access your GPU fully to be able to change its settings, and to make it launch on startup without asking you for a password. With it installed, you'll go to Make a New Profile, set the activation to automatic and the executable you'll just type VR monitor. It doesn't matter if you've got it as a flat pack or a native thing, VR monitor is fine. And this is just saying only use this profile if the person's in VR. Then set the GPU to advanced and set the power profile to virtual reality. And that should fix if you're having your Steam VR graph show really weird spikes in frame times. And the final Linux special thing is that you should probably go into your Steam VR settings, enable dev mode, video, per application video settings, and enable legacy motion smoothing. That's because the legacy motion smoothing method seems to let games do fine if they're just approaching the refresh rate of your headset, like they're just above it, but they're nearly not meeting the performance you need. That's fine here. But if you leave it on the new motion smoothing setting, it seems to compensate too early, which leads to really bad performance when you could be actually having it just about fine. The reason ALVR can run on a bunch of different headsets all from the same file is because of something called OpenXR, which is basically a standard for how VR and AR apps talk to the thing that's running them. That's also really good for full-on VR games, since it means that they can make them for PC VR and standalone VR without having to make special versions for each. ALVR didn't used to do this, which is why there's a fork called ALXR, but that's not necessary anymore generally, unless you want one of their specific features, but they're based off a really old version of ALVR, so if you use Linux, you're probably not going to want to use that. But I just thought that might be an interesting fact for you. Configuring ALVR on the surface isn't very complicated. You can and make it work without much effort, but there are lots of things you can change to make them exactly how you'd like them. And maybe your subscription feed would be exactly how you'd like it if you added me. I don't, but thanks for considering. The only things you need to really change for ALVR to have everything work is you should set the refresh rate to be the same as your headset, so 90 for a Pico 4 or Quest Pro or 120 for a Quest 2, and make sure you've got game audio turned on. At that point, if you connect your headset and press trust in the connected devices section, you'll be able to see things properly and hear things properly. But if you want to do some tuning, the first thing you should probably try messing with is your resolution. Despite the fact that your headset has a fixed, unchanging number of pixels on the screen that the determine how sharp the screen can be, increasing your resolution in ALVR can yield visual quality increases up to around 1.6 to 1.8 times as many pixels. So if you've got the spare GPU, resolution is something that's worth increasing. But you might notice ALVR has two resolution settings. The first is the transcoding resolution, which is the resolution at which your GPU outputs a video that will be sent to your VR headset. And the second is the headset view resolution, which is the resolution that your game will actually render at. And even though it might sound counterintuitive, they don't both need to be the same for you to still get the benefits of upping them both. So I set my game render resolution to 1.4 times as many pixels that my headset has, but I only set the transcode resolution to 1.3 times. I set the transcoding resolution a bit lower because that decreases the encoder and decoder latency, which obviously you want less latency for VR, but it doesn't hurt the image quality much less because you're still getting the extra details of more pixels being averaged into one before, so after the game render, but before it's turned into the video stream by your GPU. The way I set the resolution higher was knowing my headset's resolution and going into a calculator and doing 2160 times 1.4 and entering that number in the absolute section, but you can also click scale in LVR and just drag a slider and that should work too if you don't care about getting the exact number of pixels you want. Realistically, I'm just being pedantic. Also, as a little bonus tip that might go along with your troubleshooting related to resolution, if you're getting stutters, but your Steam VR graph shows that it's all green, it's all being rendered in time, you might want to increase your maximum buffered frames. I only set it to 2.3 up from the default of 2. This adds more latency, but if you're just getting weird random stutters and you don't quite know where they're coming from, try upping that and see if it helps. 
Bitrate is a setting that increases visual quality, but also puts more strain on your encoder, decoder, and network. So ideally, it's something you'd like to try and keep as low as possible with as high visual quality as possible, which is why I recommend setting your video codec to HEVC. H.264 is a much older and less efficient video codec, but it also could be a useful thing in case you're having decode latency issues with the headset because the headset will be able to decode H.264 faster. So both codecs do have a place, but HEVC should probably be chosen. But for the bitrate settings themselves, which HEVC should let you be a bit more efficient with now, the default is set to adaptive, and that's good because the old way of doing things was for the default bitrate to just be a constant low bitrate, which is good because it means people on bad network connections will have ALVR function, but it's bad because people who don't know to change the setting will be stuck bottlenecked by a slow network connection that they don't even have. So ALVR now tries to look at your uh, transcoding and network performance and it'll pick a bitrate that it thinks is reasonable. And although generally that's fine, fluctuations in what's happening on your network and headsets doing weird things in the background means that sometimes that bitrate can go all wavy, which can mean sometimes your views are really blocky and sometimes they look really good and it's not, so it's not often very consistent. So I prefer to pick constant bitrate. And the way to figure out what constant bitrate is best for you is first, check if you have a really cheap router, because if you have a really cheap router on Network Switch, your Ethernet ports will actually be limited to 100 megabits per second. This is something that only very, very cheap routers and, and network cards for computers do. Uh, so you might want to look into upgrading that separately because the Wi-Fi probably won't be great. But if you've got a very old router, there is a good chance that your computer's end will be limited to 100 megabits per second, even if your headset could receive more over Wi-Fi. Other things that limit the kind of bit rates you can achieve without stuttering would be poor quality Wi-Fi antennas, um, being very far away from them, being on the 2.4 gigahertz network. If you have a 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi network and a 5 gigahertz one, go to the 5 gigahertz one. And if you don't have separated ones, go into your router settings and separate them. Google how to do this. 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi is not low latency or consistent enough for wireless VR. But beyond generally trying to take those things into account, trial and error. Just Try a bitrate, do you get stutters, look at the network latencies, did that seem low enough? If it is, up it. If you start to get problems, lower it. I settled on 130 to 150-ish being reasonable. And if you also decide on something above 100 megabits per second, it's probably worth going down to your network protocol and clicking TCP rather than UDP because TCP is more consistent for higher throughput connections. But below 100, UDP can be very slightly less latency. It's pretty negligible though on modern hardware. Reduce color bending should just always be turned on. I've experienced no performance loss with it and it will work for everyone other than Linux users with NVIDIA GPUs. And if you're having problems with pixelation and weird looking edges to your visuals, you should modify your foveation settings. By default, so if you're on a quest, you should probably look at decreasing the foveation ratios, try decreasing them by one at first, look around, if that's fine, then leave it, if not, move them down a bit more. But if you're on a headset other than a Quest, like a Pico that has a wider FOV, you might also notice that the foveation, like the, the pixeliness, starts too close to the center of your vision, so you, so you should increase the width, which will push off the compressed edges further. If the center of your vision isn't sharp enough for you, but you also don't have the GPU power to increase the resolution, sharpening is a pretty easy way first to overdo it and completely ruin the image, so try and stay below 0.5 at least. 0.5 is very, very extreme for me. But if you don't overdo it, it's a good way to get more perceived sharpness without any higher GPU load. I use about 0.3 and it's just a bit nicer. Controller prediction is a feature in ALVR and generally wireless VR streaming software that tries to predict based on your current movements where the controller will be by the time the frame arrives at your headset to try and negate some of the latency that's inherent in doing things wirelessly. And obviously, that's not perfectly accurate, so you can change how intense that effect is. If you make the number lower, it will react more quickly and also more inaccurately, and the higher you send it, it will, well, still be inaccurate, but it will be smoothed, but take longer. Generally, it's probably best to keep it where it is by default. By default, it's at three. I say it to 2.9. I just 
barely turned it down and that makes it better for things like Beat Saber, but if you're more focusing on aiming and being still and less jittery is better, you should maybe move it a bit higher, but generally it's fine where it is. In the controllers section, you can offset the position of your controllers if you want to move them away from their physical location for whatever reason, and you can increase the intensity of the haptics, which I used to do on my Quest but I don't do on my Pico because the haptics are really rattly. And finally, if you've got a PC where hardware encoding doesn't want to work, you can use a setting called Force Software Encoding, which will use your CPU to encode the video. This is worse, it has a much bigger performance impact and, and is way less efficient, but if it works and the other thing doesn't, then this means you can play VR, so you should know about it. And if you're a developer, like I thought I needed to be when Pico's vibration was really bad and I wanted to make my own VR haptic solution instead, ALVR is really, really friendly to developers. They've got their own REST and WebSocket APIs. It's obviously, it's open source, so if you want to mess with the code of ALVR itself, you can. Um, the developers are really open to suggestions and ideas. It's all just really nice if you're interested in making things. By now, I've made numerous videos about ALVR, but that's because it just keeps getting better. It's a great example of open source software that listens to users, serves the community. It's actually a good alternative to the paid or closed source alternatives. It works across markets that wouldn't really have the kind of size to get business interest like Linux users, but the kind that still need good software. The project seems friendly, they take ideas on, they're moving in the right direction constantly. I'm just a really big fan of ALVR. So hopefully you've enjoyed, hopefully this was useful. Um, subscribe if you'd like to. If you want to talk about technology, there's a Discord and Matrix server in the description. Um, hopefully you've enjoyed and bye. I really hope I wasn't shiny again, it's really warm.